This video shows the proper procedure for maintaining your Fisher EZH series regulator. Before performing the following steps, release all pressure from the pilot and main valve. Please refer to the EZH series instruction manual for proper shutdown procedure, drawings, part numbers, and torque recommendations. Use proper lifting techniques while performing maintenance. Remove the travel indicator assembly. Remove the O-ring from around the cap. Loosen the cap screws. Remove hex head cap screws, washers, and hex nuts. Carefully lift the upper actuator casing off the lower actuator casing. Move the upper actuator casing to a stable work area. Unscrew eight screws to remove the cap from the upper actuator casing. Remove the cap from the upper actuator casing. Remove the eye bolts from the cap. Inspect the upper actuator casing. Remove O-ring. Remove split rings and examine for damage or wear. If damaged, remove and replace with new parts. Lubricate the anti-friction rings and then place them in the body first, noting that the split portion of the rings should be 180 degrees apart from each other. Then lubricate the O-ring and slide it between the anti-friction rings. Go to the upper spring seat. Unscrew eight special screws. Attach eye bolt to the upper spring seat and lift up. Remove the sleeve assembly. Lift off the diaphragm and plate system and move to a stable work area. Remove O-ring and replace if needed. Inspect the diaphragm for damage or wear. Remove the screws. Lift off the inlet plate. Remove the O-ring, examine it, and replace if necessary. Remove the diaphragm. Lubricate the grooves on the inlet plate and outlet plate.
Lubricate O-rings on the outlet plate. Reinstall the O-rings. Then replace or reinstall the diaphragm on the outlet plate. Place the inlet plate back on the diaphragm. Replace screws. Tighten using a crisscross pattern five times around and using the proper torque values specified in the instruction manual. Go back to the body. Align screw holes on the cap to the sleeve guide screws. Utilize cap to unscrew sleeve guide. Remove sleeve guide. There are two sets of O-rings and anti-friction rings. Start with the first set. Inspect the O-ring and anti-friction rings for damage or wear. Replace if necessary. Flip the sleeve guide over. Inspect the O-ring and anti-friction rings for damage or wear. Replace if necessary. When reinstalling the anti-friction rings, be sure to place the split portion of the rings 180 degrees opposite of each other. Replace the O-ring. Flip the sleeve guide over to replace the first set. When reinstalling the anti-friction rings, be sure to place the split portion of the rings 180 degrees opposite of each other. Replace the O-ring. Go back to the body. Remove the cage. Remove the seat ring and inspect it for damage or wear. Replace it with a new part if damaged. Remove O-ring from the body. Inspect it for damage or wear and replace if necessary. Lubricate the O-ring and replace it into the body. Place the seat ring on top of the O-ring in the body with the curved side down and seat edge up. Place the cage on top of the seat ring. Go back to the sleeve. 
Lubricate the sleeve in the upper plate contact area and assemble the diaphragm and plate system on the sleeve system. Screw the special screws already on the sleeve to fix the diaphragm and plate system on the sleeve system. See the instruction manual for proper torque values. Tighten screws using a star crisscross pattern for five times until proper specified torque is achieved. Lubricate sleeve guide and insert back into body. Carefully insert the trim system into the sleeve guide utilizing the eye bolts that fit in the upper spring seat threaded hole. When trim system has been reinstalled, then remove cap from sleeve assembly. Put cap back in upper actuator. Insert cap screws. Lubricate lower casing on the diaphragm contact area. Insert the sleeve assembly back into the body and then remove the eye bolt. Lubricate the diaphragm on the upper casing contact area. Carefully place the upper actuator casing on top of the lower actuator casing and trim system using a stud to guide. Note, rotate the upper casing such that the outer holes for sensing lines are perpendicular to gas flow and outer holes of lower casing. Lubricate the threads on the bolts. Bolt together the upper and lower actuator casings using cap screws, washers, and hex nuts. See instruction manual for proper torque values. Tighten the cap screws using a star crisscross pattern for five times until the proper torque is achieved. Mount the O-ring on the cap. Set the travel indicator stem through the casing hole and tap it into the groove in the diaphragm plate. Slide the travel indicator fitting over the stem and tighten to the cap.